So what, what do you do when you want to study change over time, but you only have one time point of data? In this talk, I present how I'm using space as a proxy for time to study effects of tourism development on small-scale fisheries. So small-scale fisheries are important to people as a food source and for their livelihoods. And they're also a major driver of change in the oceans. So whether you're interested in addressing poverty or protecting coastal ecosystems, small-scale fisheries are important. These fisheries are disproportionately concentrated in developing countries, where tourism is rapidly expanding, driving development and change, and is often promoted as a pathway to improve community well-being or environmental conservation. Yet due to the complex human environment interactions of the coastal zone, it's difficult to anticipate the actual outcomes of tourism, creating the need to study how these processes change over time. The problem is finding or generating multiple time points of data. So instead of looking at change over time, I'm studying difference across space. My work is done on the Pacific coast of Colombia, in eight rural fishing communities that are only accessible by boat from Buenaventura, which you can see here. These communities share similar socio-cultural heritage and exist within a connected ecosystem, but have experienced disparate rates of tourism development largely related to the ease of access to and from Buenaventura. These arrows show the travel pathways through the bay, primarily that you arrive by boat from here, and then travel by land this way, but these are all only accessible by an extra boat ride. So based on this access, the spatial, this shows the spatial relationships and spectrum of development with close it, whoops, closest to port and most developed with about an hour of travel time to the furthest away at five hours and less developed. So don't pay attention to the numbers here so much in the, the main block, but um, this table is comparing various development indicators across communities as shown up here. We can see that the, that the lowest values of development, shown in red and orange, are found in the more distant communities down towards the bottom, supporting the validity of using access to port as a proxy for development stage. So by studying differences across this space, I'm able to better understand the effects of tourism on human environment interactions. Well, what I was going to put up here, maybe it'll come up in a minute, is that, for example, with the table that was, I was going to show, is that we can see household livelihood participation in each community. Uh, what it would show you is that the colors represent participation rates and the, uh, oh yeah, see here? Yeah, we'll just stay there. Okay, so, <laughs> so we can see that the more accessible, again, this is livelihood uh, participation by community. So we can see that the more accessible, more developed communities have higher participation in tourism and secondary industries, while the less accessible and less developed communities have a high participation in resource-based livelihoods. So this isn't particularly surprising, and these findings are just the tip of the iceberg. But they illustrate how identifying spatial patterns of change can enable research that seeks to explore processes of change over time. Thank you. <laughs>